Hi guys, welcome to another Dead Good War. Today we're in Logie, which is a small village about 10 minutes from Stirling in Scotland. And we're at Logie Old Kirk. Now we got really lucky today. Um, one of the caretakers, the lady that looks after the place, gave us a free little tour, uh, which was kind of a... Um, yeah, it was really good. Learned quite a lot. It's all good reading stuff on the internet, but you just really can't beat a bit of local knowledge. Anyway, enjoy the walk around and the lady will be with you in a minute and uh, give you some more information. Over a site here for over a thousand years. Right. One, one way and the other, I say a site of worship. First church that we have records of would be 1320. And when we did the project and had the repairs done on the building, we had to get archaeologists in to check the foundations. Yeah. And there are foundations of something. But unless you take that down, <laughs> <laughs> which we're not going to do. No. We took over the project in 2007 when it was very, very overgrown. And uh, so we have uh, two Norse hogbacks here and possibility of others uh, distributed around because stonework was reused. Yeah. The grave at the end here, uh, you're taking some photograph, you can lift this thing and you can have a look at our, our treasure. <laughs> Treasure's always good. <laughs> <laughs> The memorials on the end wall are all to the Graham family, yeah. as of the Grahams uh, of Montrose, Dukes of Montrose family, Graham. Mm -hmm. And uh, they owned Airthley, pre Airthley State, which is now the university, yeah. uh, way back in history. Uh, when Bonnie Dundee Graham came along, he ran up massive debts and it was sold out of the family. And then Donald Graham came back from the East End Air Company and bought it back. And they have the rights right up to today for memorials on this oh. wall. The one that everybody looks at is the two angels, the air three angels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Lady Forbes of Calendar had a room full of gifts to be sent to the troops for the First World War. She hadn't enough money to get the stuff out. So she held a concert in her castle at Herbertshire at Denny. And these young ladies of Downton Abbey of the era, where young ladies did nice things and learned to play instruments and things, they were to help entertain uh, at this concert. Unfortunately, overnight, fire broke out in the library and the girls perished in the Aww. fire. One was on, it was actually her 16th birthday, which was a real tragedy. But a real treasure, I don't know whether you noticed the one we have under cover. Yeah, we just looked at that one, didn't we? Uh, yeah. uh, if you want, we can tip it up if you want to take a photograph. Yeah, that would be great. Um, see, so we've just had the fence put up yesterday, so... Oh, right. We were just coming to see if it was still... <laughs> uh, if the safety fencing had been taken away. Now, if you'd just like to take the other end, we can tip it up for you. And that will let you get a, oh, wow. a proper picture of Lucent, yeah. spouse to James Bryce. Now, there was a village here just along the back path called Pathfoot, uh, which was famous for shoemakers. Right. And this is a shoemaker's knife. Yeah. It's got a crown, which indicates he was high class, so you'll get nice silver buckles. That's a high class metal is, worker. Is that, that one? The that crown. That's the knife. The knife, yeah. And the crown. We've got the skull and crossbones, mortality symbols. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The hourglass, Mount and more, these are all mortality. The wings of the resurrection and the inverted heart pierced by the bow and arrow, which indicates uh, an early death. Right. Now, Margaret Clayson was the first spouse of James Bryce. She died in childbirth with the second child. Uh, he was well to do, he owned the tannery and he was a shoemaker himself. And when the drovers came, any cattle that had died on the road, they brought the corpses with them and they sold them to James Bryce, who tanned them, and it became famous for shoemaking. Oh. And anyone who was anyone had path foot shoes in those days. Jimmy shoes of 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> um, he remarried, he was left obviously, he had the hostel, a busy man. He remarried, wife number two died, having given him two children. Wife number three was a bit stronger, she gave him 15 children. 
<laughs> and we're so lucky that we have family contact in Netherlands, descended from this stone, who have given us all the family history. Oh, amazing. So Brilliant. We, we have that. But we, actually, we have a work day coming up. Our group has work days uh, three or four times a year, and the first one is in March. Oh, no, April. Fourth of April this year. And uh, after that, it'll be uncovered for the summer. So you want to cover it in the winter one? Oh, the, yeah. October. October. Our, our, our last one. God, it's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now I'll take you over and show, I said I'm not, we do guided, full guided tours July and August in the Sunday afternoons. All oh, right, brilliant. Uh, and we're open to the public, but so you're not getting the full tour. <laughs> but I'll show you our hog max before we head off. We actually, this is a watch hut, we've converted it to an interpreter centre. We've got our photographs and records and things in there. Right. But we'll leave these out for people to help themselves. These are our two hogbacks. Do you know anything about hogbacks? No, no. The hogbacks were Viking right. origin. These are estimated from about 1080. Yeah. They were marked with markings like roofing shingles. Oh. Uh, you know, this, yeah. this. If you come on a Sunday afternoon, but it's a beautiful sunny day, about the end of July, at four o'clock, the sun's up there. You can still see them when we get the moss off. Wow. This one got broken up uh, to make way for a new burial. And it was only put together again about 1820. And we discovered the then grave digger had broken it up. But a gentleman from the university was doing research. And if you look along the coping stone of the kirk, Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see that one nearest here is rounded as opposed to pointed yeah. and it's got the markings on it so they reckon there were more here yeah. than the two there is quite a good one out that's known as Tillicutri Upper mm. which is in amongst the houses it's not the easiest to get to Tillicutri normal one is beside the church yeah. Tillicutri Upper you have to go after the church you take a road which is called Harveston Grove mm -hmm. And you take that, which is after the church on your left hand side, and you work your way up towards the houses, and it's a very small site. Right. Just there. Lovely. If you want to pop down, we'll see what we've yeah, got in the leaflets, if this is your, if, if your interest. Well, how good was that little tour? That's more information than I could learn in about a year if I looked into this place. And I'm really no expert on gravestones, yet it's still a fairly new hobby to me. So thank you again to that lady. I'm calling a lady because I forgot her name. So this is the new fencing she was talking about where the walls collapse and some of it's gone into the stream below. I think she said she needs about £52,000 in order to build the wall and make it stable again.
So there's another example of a, a heart upside down, which I think the lady said was a sign of an early death. Is that a crown at the bottom there? Which she said that means you're uh, quite well to do. Nice example of a malt sugar there. If I died and ended up here with a really cool skull on it. I'll be happy with that. Mm -hmm. 